So, you know, you've sat in the front row here for some time. You've worked for CBS, CNN, now with Fox. How would you characterize the relationship between President Trump and the news media? Antagonistic, I think, is the word that I would probably use on, on both sides. So what we are seeing is representative of what's really taking place? Yeah, I think so. I mean, when, when the camera is on in the briefing room, the level of antagonism is a little higher than when we were having those off-camera briefings for a number of weeks. Uh, Which you walked out of at one point, right? I walked out of an off-camera briefing because it was coming up on 3 o'clock and I had to go out to the So not a protest To do a live shot. No, it wasn't a protest. And then, you know, I, I have a, uh, a good relationship with Sarah Huckabee Sanders and we needle each other. And so she needled me on the way out saying, oh, you're leaving? You're bored? And I turned around and I said, well, if it was on camera, I might not be. But I was leaving to do a live shot. I had to do it. You say antagonistic. Any more antagonistic than it's been before? You know, when Josh Ernest was standing up there for Obama, was it different? I don't think it was so antagonistic during the Obama administration years, but it certainly was antagonistic during the Nixon years. You know, to, to some degree, it was antagonistic during the Reagan years, but the chief antagonist in, in those times was Sam Donaldson. But I think on a general level, the relationship between the press and the White House and the White House and the press is, quote, hotter than it has been in recent memory. Uh, and, and I think that's a factor of the person who's the president. Journalists normally bristle when a, a prime minister or a president praises their work or where they work. Is it awkward for you when President Trump singles out Fox? For me, it, it doesn't bother me if the president says, you know, John's doing a fair job of covering me, because that's what I pride myself in doing, regardless of if it's a Republican president or a Democratic, Democratic president or an independent or whoever, that I cover them fairly. And I don't give them a pass, but I just listen to what they have to say. I listen to what the other head side has to say. I measure their policies against, you know, what has happened in the past and what might happen in the future. And I just treat them fairly. But, but and, he, he loves Fox like no other. Well, don't forget, when it comes to Fox, we have the editorial side of Fox and we have the news side of Fox. And those two things don't really cross over very much. So my, my job here at Fox is to fairly and accurately cover this White House and to not inject my own opinions into anything that I'm covering, to look at things through a lens of impartiality and report on it that way. And that's what I've always done, whether I was at CBS sitting in this chair over here or whether I was at CNN during the morning show or here at Fox. That's the way that I have always lived my life, even when I was at City TV back in Toronto. And that's what I will always do is through a lens of impartiality, uh, fairly and accurately, cover this White House. Is it awkward for you when someone like Sean Hannity or Fox and Friends appear to be very pro-Trump and you're here trying to be a journalist holding the administration to account? I, I do what I do. And the network wants me to do what I do. That's why they made me the White House correspondent. They, they know my background. They know my track record as a journalist. And they said, we want you to do the White House and we want you to cover it the way that you cover it. And that's what I'm doing. When, when people say mainstream media, what do you hear? I, I hear a pejorative label for somebody who doesn't agree with your point of view. And I think that it's, uh, it's a moniker that has been creative to, to describe people that have a, a different political bent or a different editorial bent than the person who's ascribing that label to them. I, I don't think there's really any such thing as the mainstream media. We have a tremendous amount of media in this country. It's been exploding. And I look at each and every individual outlet as pursuing news the way that they do. And people, if they want to put labels on it, they can go ahead. But I've, I've never looked at, at the media as being a group of people. You know, it's all individual outlets. So for me, the label of mainstream media doesn't really mean anything. You're obviously still familiar with Canadian media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my perspective, and you can certainly disagree with it, is that it's less polarized than what I see and observe in the U.S is that the polarization of the media here a reflection of what Americans feel, or is it adding to that divide? Well, I, I think that Canada, uh, just in a general sense, is a less polarized nation than the United States is. I mean, this is a very polarized politically country, and I think the media is representative of that. You have some media outlets that are very conservative. 
You have some media outlets that are, are very liberal, and then you have a whole collection of people who are in the middle, some to the left of center, some but to the right of center. But does that split contribute to the polarization I or think just it's reflect ref it? I think it's reflective of the polarization. Now, on the extreme ends of things, uh, some outlets may be contributing, you know, particularly if they're blogs mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, uh, Facebook postings, whatever you want, because determining exactly what's media now is very difficult because you have these, this army of citizen journalists as well. So I think on the very fringes, they may be contributing to the split in, in the country, but I think what we see by and large is reflective of the split and it's not a causality. Thanks for your time. You bet. Good to talk to you. You too. Thank you.